Deadline to file his claim for Chief Minister in Sudhapasim province ends at 5 p.m. this evening. Kamal Shah of Nepali Congress certain to be the Chief Minister. Increase in attraction towards electric vehicles sees 71% of total import of four-wheel vehicles being EVs. Efforts to curb pollution fail to produce results as use of EVs yet to increase in public sector. Tension soars in Middle East as dozens of rockets fired from Lebanon into Israel. Countries urge their citizens to leave Lebanon at the earliest. At least 17 killed in a Gaza school by an Israeli strike. And Katie Ledesky continues to make history at the Paris Olympics, becomes the second swimmer in history to win an event at four straight summer games. Kamal Bahadur Shah of Nepali Congress is set to become the Chief Minister of Sudhir Pashim Province. Other aspirants of the position have stepped back after Nepali Congress President Sherbal Dewa directed to appoint Shah as the province Chief Minister. The Province Assembly Party meeting of Nepali Congress is underway to make a decision in this regard. The meeting is set to finalize the names of province ministers as well. Congress President Dewa's nephew Prakash Dewa, Bahadur Thapa and Diwan Singh Bista had expressed aspirations to become chief ministers since it was decided that Congress would lead Sudhir Pasim province government. They all have stepped back after they were directed to appoint Shah, who is also the parliamentary party leader, to the position. Sudhir Pasim province governor Nazir Mia had called for formation of the new government after Dirga Bahadur Sudari had furnished his resignation as provisioned by the sub-article 1 of Article 169 of the Constitution of Nepal. The deadline set by the province governor to furnish claim for chief minister in Sudhir Pasim province ends at 5 p.m. this evening. Shah has made preparation to file his claim by this evening with the support of lawmakers from Nepali Congress, CPNUML and Nagarik Unmukti Party. Prior to this, Shah had served as the province chief minister for 14 months. Meanwhile, CBNUML has yet to finalize the names for the ministerial positions, while Nagari Mukti has already finalized those who will lead the province ministers of its share. Of the seven provinces, maternal mortality rate is high in Lumini as it stands at 207 per 100,000. Now, despite formation of strategic plans by the Lumini province government, it has not been able to curb the maternal mortality rate which has appeared higher in urban areas despite ease in access to health services and institutions. With many quality hospitals with specialist doctors, Rupandehi is known as a hub of health facilities. However, 23 women in their pregnancies died during treatment in the previous fiscal year in Rupandehi. According to data, maternal mortality rate stands at 207 per 100,000 live births in Lumini province. The maternal mortality rate is higher in private hospitals in relative comparison to government hospitals in the province. Lack of trained human resource, admitting patients more than capacity of the hospital because of competition and referring only after complications surface have been identified as the reasons for the higher maternal mortality rate. Despite the province government claiming of formulating a strategic plan to curb the maternal mortality rate, the high rate has raised questions on the efficiency of the government plan. The Ministry of Agriculture had intervened and taken the leadership of the Dairy Development Corporation after it failed to clear due payments to farmers and reported of continuous losses. The government had issued numerous directives to strengthen the institutional structure and work on the commercialization of the projects. However, the corporation's financial status has been dreadful. The Dairy Development Corporation has been unable to clear the due payments to dairy farmers from 41 districts which has exceeded 1 billion 500 million rupees. As kato, 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 tobacco, poitala de sobe pot potty putego, and the Sar minus homina dutko poison no ipos, moil kiko lagis, moil zun duho gorsu, to do hot moil kiko lagori as mole, mole mirror, dimaxeta tiragora, moil gaino palin near Ima Pugas. Eleven in the Rubore, Ago Corsal, Corsal Hanuparnum, and some so in the Godana Panipan time, let people have a maintenance or no person. I am going to go to the store. I am going to go to the store. I am going to go to the store. I am going to go to the 
The corporation at the moment has 700 tons of butter, 950 tons of powder milk and 12 tons of cheese in deposit, which it says is unable to sell due to lack of market demand. The average daily sales of 13 million rupees has shrunk to 10 million these days. The Ministry of Agriculture has estimated the corporation's loss last year is around 400 million rupees. Officials say the release of payments had not taken place as banking and financial institutions have not trusted them with loans. Since March, the corporation is being led by Joint Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development. The government has yet to appoint a managing director, despite the process being complete. Based on the Ministry of Finance, the state invests more than 661 billion rupees each year on corporations like the DDC. However, profits have been limited to 10 billion. The government has aired plans to change the model of DDC operation, but that has yet to happen. Previously in our Public Voice segment, we'd asked students who had just cleared their grade 12 examinations about their future plans. Almost half of the students who spoke to us said they intend to go abroad for further study and employment opportunities. But yesterday we asked their parents and guardians about what should be done to retain the youth who plan to go abroad. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. So this my Rosgar ko bebasta hunu pario. Porna ra bolit jagir kuchay shurat chha chay. Hi chha Nepal mein chha bannye chay. Dekhi nu pario. Desh bhitra gori ra kei uncha bannye gori ko usha palau ni gori ko baatron sir jana gori nazar uri chha. Shichhe ay padali masudar hunu pario. Ina dosto abo bachelor gori da char borsa ko uncha thora banda kiri ab bannye matre hoti ho gori da gori chha borsa panch borsa lagai thi chhe tiyule. Padai ko chha chha the Rosgar. Jibi ko parjan gori ko lagi soyog milne ki samko shichhe padali. सरकारले It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. The question is, what is your take on parliamentarians asking random questions and ministers not responding to them? Your options are A. Irresponsible behavior, B. Ignoring guidelines, and C. Good response. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The craze towards electric vehicles has been on the rise across the world, including Nepal. Consumption has taken off, imports have increased, but the lack of turning public transportation services to electric options has rendered efforts to curb pollution ineffective. Out of 16,300 four-wheelers imported in the last fiscal year, more than 11,700 were electric, which is 71% of total import. It stood at 52% the year before. As EVs worth 30 billion rupees were imported, it included 11,700 cars, jeeps, and vans. While the Sansari here, they wanted the he mobility to the Goyakos. The Tesco Motor Kis on Nakin, when they get the Heranate or Yenipoli, future of mobility and immobility over when Banuko current came on the Ketus of a Heranabani Rak, only the Eskus and Dere benefits of Vanico. Benefit you as a case of Mana Kiri, Monitor Dita Mahola, or Cookies of Mana Kiri, even of June environmental June, Yudin climate change, Kuzun, Kuchin, Tesco, Tesco, Kurama Panisa, Eskis and Dere Tulu contribute to God. In twenty twenty three, the global sales of EVs. Stood at 13 million, which was 29% higher than the sales during June of 2022. 17 million EVs are expected to be sold this year globally. EV sales in Nepal is also ever increasing. However, public vehicles and motorcycles that cover 80% of total vehicles plying on the streets are still fuel based. Meanwhile, the import of fuel has reduced. Last fiscal year, Nepal imported petroleum products worth 288 billion rupees, which was 10 billion less than the month of June the year before. Although the government says it intends to promote electric vehicles, customs, meanwhile, have been increasing each year. <laughs> Public transportation में डेढ़ सौ गाड़ियों डीजल का चल, जिससे डेढ़ प्रदूषण गर्सा, 
डीजल को धुआं बने तो डब्ल्यूएचओ ने नहीं कार्सिनोजेनिक बनाया कार्सिनोजेनिक बना कैंसर होना सकने हुए तेलिए हम प्राथमिकता तैंर जानु पर्च रेस पच्चीस दुई पांग्रे रही को फ्रेट व्हीकल अथवा धुआनी करने सामान ट्रक इत्यादि तो सक Experts also call on the government to ensure adequate infrastructure like charging stations, among others, to promote the use of EVs. Nepal Railway Company has generated revenue of more than 70 million rupees within a year. The railway that connects Indian border area of Jainagar with the district headquarters of Madhya province, Janakpur and Mothuri's Pangaha has provided service to 1.5 million in the last fiscal year and collected 77.5 million rupees. The entity had generated the revenue by selling tickets and providing railway service to around 900,000 Nepali nationals and 600,000 Indian nationals. The railway service that began 26 months ago after it was upgraded with the assistance of the Government of India is operated from Jainagar to Mautari's Vangaha once a daily basis and it is operated three times a day from Jainagar to Janakpur's Kurtha. The local residents of Dhanusa and Mautari among other border districts were deprived of railway service for six years while works to upgrade the infrastructure was being carried out. The Tanakpur Jainagar Railway Service had begun operation on 2nd of April 2022, 18 months after the train was purchased from India and brought to Nepal. Time now for the international news. Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system went into action early this morning, intercepting a barrage of rockets. A wave of rockets was fired near the border about 25 minutes after midnight local time. Israeli media said dozens of rockets had been fired from Lebanon into Israel. Amid soaring tensions in the Middle East, countries have begun urging their citizens to leave Lebanon at the earliest. Hezbollah launched dozens of rockets at the town of Beit Hillel in northern Israel at around 25 minutes past midnight local time. Footage posted on social media showed air defense systems intercepting the missiles. There have been no reports of casualties. Iran has vowed severe retaliation against Israel, which it blames for the death of Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran on Wednesday. His assassination came hours after Israel killed Hezbollah commander Paul Trucker in Beirut. It is feared that Lebanon-based Hezbollah and Iran-backed group could play a heavy role in any such retaliation, which in turn could spark a serious Israeli response. The U.S. Embassy in Beirut has urged its citizens to leave Lebanon on any ticket available amid soaring tensions in the Middle East. The advisory follows a similar warning from UK Foreign Secretary David Lamy, who said the regional situation could deteriorate rapidly. Jordan's foreign ministry has also issued advice to its citizens, telling those in Lebanon to leave immediately and warning others not to travel there. Canada has warned its nationals to avoid travel to Israel on top of existing advice against going to Lebanon because the situation can deteriorate further without warning in the region. Meanwhile, in Gaza, at least 17 people in a school sheltering displaced persons were killed by an Israeli strike, the Hamas-run authorities have said. The Israeli military says the Hamama school in Gaza City's Sheikh Radwan neighborhood was being used as a command center for militants. Hamas has denied it operates from civilian facilities. Israeli ministers were sent home this weekend with satellite phones in case of an attack on the country's communication infrastructure. It is now time for the sports news. Sports news. Champions in the women's category and runners-up in the men's category of Kava Beach Volleyball Championship have returned home. The women's team of Kamala Pun and Manisha Choudhury and the men's team of Man Bahadur Shrestha and Dil Bahadur Sunar along with coach Rupak Pista were welcomed by Nepal Volleyball Association President Jitendra Bahadur Chand and other officials at the Triyuvan International Airport earlier this morning. In the final played in Thimpu of Bhutan yesterday, Kamala and Manisha had defeated Uzbekistan in straight sets to win the women's category of the championship. Meanwhile, the men's team of Man Bahadur and Dil Bahadur had lost to the Maldives in straight sets in the final. The tournament was participated by 10 teams in the men's category and 7 in the women's. Having won medals despite a very short preparation, the players have shared grievances of lack of infrastructures for the sport in the country. China continued to dominate the Paris Olympics medal tally with 16 gold medals. 
In addition to gold, total gold, eight silver. Kari Ledesky continued to make history at the Paris Olympics by becoming the second swimmer in history to win an event at four straight summer games. 100 meter freestyle last night, Tyler Ruckert, previously held solely by Michael Phelps, won gold in the 200 in track star Carl Lewis, Soviet gymnast Larissa Latinina, and Finnish runner Pavo Nurmi in a tie for second place. The only athlete to win more goals is Michael Phelps himself with 23. Ludeski went faster than her winning time in Tokyo, touching in 8 minutes 11.04 seconds. Titmus, the Australian star known as the Terminator, was right on her shoulder nearly the entire race, but Ludeski pulled away in the final 100. Teddy Rainer won the decisive bout against Japan's Tatsuru Saito in a moment of great drama to give France the judo mixed team title at the Paris Games, earning him a national record equaling fifth Olympic gold medal. Three years after leading France to victory to retain the title 4-3 in front of a frenetic partisan crowd at the Chandemars Arena. More than 6,000 fans rather, packed into the arena belted. The gold medal sees Reiner join biathlete Martin Forkite, who won as titles at the Sochi and Pyeongchang Winter Games in 2014 and 2018, at the top of the list of most decorated French Olympians. Now, Zhen Chuen became the first Chinese player to win an Olympic tennis singles gold medal when she held off Krishyas Donna Vekic for a 6-6-3 win in a tense final. The 21-year-old sixth seed was given enthusiastic backing by a sizable Chinese contingent inside Roland Carros's court Philippe Chartier and responded with a composed performance. Vekic herself bidding to become Croatia's first race match points as Vekic drove a backhand wide and finished it off with a well-placed foreign winner before falling to her back with joy. China's only other gold medal in Olympic tennis came in 2004 when Li Teng and Sun Tian Tian won the women's doubles in Athens, while the best previous singles performance was Li Na's run to the semi-finals in 2008, although she missed out on a medal. Zheng, runner-up at the Australian Open this year, now looks capable of scaling the same heights as Li Na, who claimed two Grand Slam titles during her illustrious career. Now away from Olympics into some fun sport, canines and their owners competed in the World Dog Surfing Championships in Pacifica, California. The hounds entered in the contest were categorized by sizes as small, medium, large and extra large, while judges and spectators gathered on the beach to watch them hang ten. Some dogs, like a 14-year-old Cavalier King Charles Spaniel named Delilah, were seasoned veterans with more than a decade of experience hitting the waves in the annual contest. Some spectators, like San Francisco resident Samantha Berlanga, were first-time attendees intrigued by the competition. The annual contest raises awareness about dogs in need and money for charities and hosts canines ready for adoption on site. And now, before we wrap up, here's a look into the top stories one more time. 
Deadline to foreign is claim for Chief Minister in Sudha Pasim Province ends at 5 this evening. Kamal Shah of Nepali Congress certain to become the new Chief Minister. Increase in attraction towards electric vehicles sees 71% of total import of four-wheel vehicles being EVs. Efforts to curb pollution failed to produce results as use of EVs yet to increase in public transport sector. Tensions soars in the Middle East as dozens of rockets fired from Lebanon into Israel. Countries urge their citizens to leave Lebanon at the earliest. At least 17 killed in a Gaza school by an Israeli airstrike. And Katie Ledesky continues to make history at the Paris Olympics, becomes the second swimmer in history to win an event at four straight Summer Olympic Games. That is all for the moment. Our next news bulletin airs at 6 in the evening. Thank you for staying with us. Have a beautiful day ahead.